Has your provider ordered a biophysical profile, a BPP? Hi, I'm Susan White. I'm a certified nurse midwife, and let's discuss it. So what is a biophysical profile? Well, it's an assessment of fetal well-being using ultrasound and fetal monitoring, and it's looking at those fetal activities that can be affected by a decrease in oxygenation. So why would the baby have decreased oxygen? It could be due to factors like mom having a chronic condition, let's say for like chronic hypertension or diabetes. Those can affect how well the placenta functions and that can decrease oxygen to the baby. So what are some reasons your physician or midwife might order a biophysical profile? It could be that you've noticed the baby's moving less. Now your provider may have taught you how to do fetal movement counts. And that's really important because we know if there's a decrease in fetal movement, it needs to be checked out. And that's because it could be that the baby is stressed and there's decreased oxygen. And then also there is a correlation between decreased fetal movement and a risk of stillbirth later. And so it's very important to let your provider know if you think the baby's moving less to be checked out. So that's one reason. Some other reasons could be like we mentioned before, the mom might have some type of chronic condition like high blood pressure, maybe diabetes, maybe she develops preeclampsia during the pregnancy. It could be that baby's not growing well. That's called fetal growth restriction. Or if there's less than normal amount of amniotic fluid, that's also a sign the baby could be stressed. So there are five components to the biophysical profile, and we're going to list those now and then give you some more detail in just a minute. So there will be an NST done, that's a type of fetal monitoring, and then an ultrasound, the ultrasonographer will look for fetal breathing movements, and then fetal movement, fetal tone, and then the amount of amniotic fluid. Now it's kind of interesting, the activity that, de that developed first in pregnancy by the fetus is going to be the last one to be affected by low oxygen. So the baby actually really early in pregnancy, about eight weeks, will start showing fetal tone and that's going to be the last one to disappear with decreased oxygen. So first of all, let's look at the non-stress test. That is a specific type of fetal monitoring. So you can see in this picture, we use the external monitoring. So the mom has two belts on, the top one picks up contractions and the bottom one is to pick up the fetal heart rate. And we're watching the fetal heart rate tracing for about 20 minutes and we're looking to see the fetal heart rate is normal. So the normal range is between 110 and 160 beats per minute. And then we also look for what we call variability. That's where it varies a little bit, which is telling us that the baby's heart and brain are, brain are working correctly. And then we're also looking for what we call accelerations where the heart rate goes up some. And we should see two of those accelerations within that 20 minutes. Now sometimes baby's in a sleep cycle and we can extend that time to 40 minutes. And I actually have a whole separate video on NST that I'll put a link in the description. Now let's look at those components that the ultrasonographer is looking for on ultrasound. So first of all, they're looking for what's called fetal breathing movement. Now obviously the baby doesn't really breathe inside, right? Because the baby's getting their oxygen through mom. But the fetus does do what we call fetal breathing movements, where they're actually taking in the amniotic fluid into their lungs and then it comes back out. So it's sort of like the lungs are practicing up for when baby's gonna breathe on its own after birth. And so the ultrasonographer is looking for at least one episode of that fetal breathing movement. Next, the ultrasonographer is looking for fetal movements. Now, we've already talked about how important it is for mom to notice the, if the baby's moving well, but this is actually when the ultrasonographer is using ultrasound to look for fetal movements. And there should be at least two movements that either move in their whole body or move in their arms and legs. Next, the ultrasonographer is going to look for fetal tone, which is different than fetal movement. So with fetal tone, what they're looking at is they're looking at either the arm or leg or hand to extend and then flex back, or even the hand just to extend and then flex. So the last thing the ultrasonographer is looking for is the amniotic fluid volume. So they're actually looking at how much amniotic fluid there is, and there should be a vertical pocket of at least two centimeters of amniotic fluid. And the reason that's important is that if there's a decrease in the amniotic fluid, that's a sign the placenta is not functioning as it should, and also can be a sign the baby has a chronic stressor. So the BPP is done, what happens next? So 
all those five components, if they're met, each one gets a score of two points. If they're not met, that would be a score of zero. And so the total points that you could get would be a 10. So eight out of 10 and 10 out of 10 are considered normal. But what if it's less than eight out of 10? Well, at that point, the provider, physician or midwife would talk to that mom and they would discuss the next options. It could be that they're gonna recommend further testing, but if it's a serious condition, they may go on and recommend delivery. Now your provider may choose to order what's called a modified BPP instead of the full biophysical profile. So that still includes the non-stress test and then it also includes what's called the amniotic fluid index where the ultrasonographer is going to look at the amount of amniotic fluid but in all four quadrants they call it of the abdomen and that should add up for a total amount of at least five centimeters. Now the modified BPP and a lot of the research is just as effective as showing the fetal status as doing the full BPP but that is really up to the provider which one they choose to order. Would you like to learn more? Check out my childbirth education classes. There's a link in the description.